Hi, this is Tom Goki from Orthopedic Educational Services. Our blog post this week is a case uh, that I think is really interesting and I'm sure you'll find interesting as well. This patient's chief complaint is I can't walk. The patient is a 34-year-old African-American male who was involved in a four-wheeler accident about 10 days before they came into the clinic. The patient reported being ejected from the four-wheeler and struck his left knee on the ground. He was unable to walk or bend his knee and unfortunately the patient's condition worsened over the next couple of days which prompted him to go to a local emergency room for evaluation. The patient was evaluated. His x-rays were read as negative by the provider there in the emergency room. They were placed in a knee immobilizer, given a prescription for their pain and uh, crutches to help with, assist with their ambulation. And they were told if they just didn't feel any better, they should follow up in a week. According to the patient, about three days after that initial ER vi visit, the patient was walking outside their home. They stepped off of the curve wrong and the contralateral leg struck the ground uh, with the leg extended and uh, the patient reported a popping sensation in that knee. Uh, they had intense pain and swelling. They were unable to bend that leg or walk on that leg and so they pro that prompted them to go back to their original ER. Again, they had an evaluation by a different provider uh, X-rays were obtained, there was no fracture noted, uh, and uh, the patient was placed in a second knee immobilizer, uh, given a, a refill of their pain medicine, and also placed on ibuprofen. They were told that if they didn't seem to improve in a few days, they should follow up with uh, their uh, family physician. So the patient's current history, uh, the patient did not follow up with their primary care provider, but they came into our clinic as a walk-in patient. They were about 10 days post-injury. Again, they complained of decreased uh, mobility and ability to walk in both knees. Uh, the patient was wearing knee immobilizers that poorly fit and uh, spent most of the time around their ankle as opposed to being centered over the knee joint. Uh, and the patient was not using crutches because they stated it made them too tired to uh, move around. Also, it caused them to have pain in their left arm. Uh, they described some intense pain with trying to flex or extend their knees, but stated that with the, the knee immobilizers on, uh, their uh, pain seemed to be uh, a lot more tolerable. They continued to have pain in their knees, but they, de they, described any, they denied having any fevers, chills, or sweats, no ridiculous symptoms, uh, and once the patient was able to stand and walk in the immobilizers, their pain was uh, uh, tolerable. Their past medical history, they've reported no drug allergies, food or latex allergies. Their past medical history was significant for end-stage renal disease. They were on home hemodialysis. The patient was a poorly controlled insulin-dependent diabetic and had hypertension. Uh, the patient had a hemodialysis shunt or fistula placed in the left upper extremity, which uh, made it difficult for the patient to use crutches by their own admission. Uh, the patient took insulin hypertensive medications, and the, and the narcotic analgesics. The patient was taking ibuprofen, but uh, stopped taking it after a day or two. Uh, the patient reported smoking one pack per day tobacco, uh, occasional ETOH, and no uh, illicit drug use. On my physical examination, the key points here were there were two plus of joint effusions of the right and left knees. They had no skin lesion sores or masses. The patient's range of motion was zero degrees in extension lying on the exam table to about 10 degrees of flexion with extreme pain uh, and this was uh, painful. This range of motion was obtained only passively. The patient was unable to perform an active quadriceps isometric contraction. The patient was unable to perform a straight leg raise against gravity and they also were unable to, to perform terminal knee extension. They had no joint lax. They had no joint laxity. The ACL and PCL ligaments both appeared to be intact. Uh, X-rays taken in our office. Uh, we were only able to get uh, AP laterals. The patient was unable to tolerate uh, sunrise or tangential views of the patellofemoral joint. And so here you see the lateral X-ray of both the left and right knee. So from that information, what do you consider this patient's diagnosis to be? Traumatic patellar tendonitis, quadriceps contusion, quad tendon rupture, calcific patellar tendonitis, dislocated patella, patellar tendon rupture, or traumatic quadriceps tendonitis. The answer, the patient on the right knee had an acute quadriceps tendon rupture 
and on the left knee they had a patellar tendon rupture. So let's review the x-rays to see these key points that should have been a uh, obvious giveaway to the provider seeing that patient initially uh, in the emergency department. On the left knee the blue arrow, the light blue arrows will indicate joint effusion. Again a joint effusion can come about for a lot of different reasons. In this case it was related to the patient's trauma of striking their leg against a solid object after being ejected off of the four-wheeler. You can see from the gold arrow that the patella looks like it's tractioned or, or pulled up away from its tibial uh, tubercle attachment. It makes the patella sort of rock uh, uh, anteriorly. It just looks like it's pulled away from that attachment. The second big giveaway here is the green arrow which shows the bony fragments of the patellar tendon were inserted into the inferior pole of the patella, the, the red arrow. And then on the x-ray it's a little, maybe a little difficult to see but the dark blue uh, indicates that the patient has an osteochondral lesion uh, on the uh, patellar surface, the articular surface there. Uh, this patient subsequently went on to have an MRI scan of both knees and uh, the MRI of this left knee showed that not only they had a significant osteochondral lesion of the articular surface of the patella but also had a corresponding uh, contusion and articular surface injury to the uh, medial femoral condyle. On the right knee, again, similar findings on x-ray that should have tipped the healthcare provider off to uh, knowing this patient had a quadriceps tendon injury. First of all, obviously a large joint effusion. Again, those can come about for many reasons. The second important thing was not only a deformity, but massive soft tissue swelling in the quadriceps tendon region of the distal thigh. Uh, these injuries don't usually cause patients to have compartment syndrome, but certainly if you uh, feel that the patient's thigh is tense uh, and very swollen from some type of trauma, uh, doing compartment pre pressure measurements are always uh, important in the diagnostic process. Uh, the gold arrow here shows what I call a splayed patella appearance, meaning that that patella is sort of drifting away uh, from uh, from the quadriceps uh, area of the thigh because there's no proximal attachment and so therefore the patella is not held in its uh, alignment in the patellofemoral groove. Uh, again, you'll see some tethering of the uh, patella inferiorly again because it's, it's intact uh, and there's no reason for that patella to ride up more uh, superiorly. So in conclusion, the key points here that uh, you should take away from this mechanism of injury is always important in uh, considering options and injuries for a patient. Uh, their past medical history is important. In this case, the patient had significant compromise to tendon structures because of the compromise associated with microvascular circulation to tendinous structures because of end-stage renal disease, tobacco use, and diabetes. The patient's description and historical accounts uh, are key here also because of their inability to flex and extend their knee. And on physical examination, the, the uh, sine qua non uh, of for patella or quadriceps injuries are their inability to perform a straight leg raise against gravity and also their inability to perform terminal knee extension, whether it's active or resistive or both. And then again, uh, patients uh, uh, many times, or providers many times who are not comfortable doing orthopedic assessments will rely on MRI scan to give them their diagnosis regarding musculoskeletal injuries. And I think as you can see from the x-rays that we had today and the case that we presented, that uh, being able to identify key changes of normal anatomy on plain x-rays can be uh, diagnostic for patients with musculoskeletal injuries, even though you're not able to see uh, tendinous or ligamentous structures. And again, in this case, uh, large joint effusion, malalignment uh, associated with patella injuries. And then also, uh, I think a real big key here was the calcific changes uh, in the patellar tendon, especially in the left leg, that should have been a key to a provider that uh, the patient had some type of uh, injury to that uh, tendinous structure, especially in the left knee. To, to learn more about orthopedic related injuries, physical examination, and to learn more about uh, x-ray evaluation, go to our website www.orthoedu.com. Again, for orthopedic educational services, I'm Tom Gokey. Have a great week.